The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Today I'm in Oxford County catching up with Ken Kerr, agronomist, BASF. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic. Sun shining, <laughs> corn is growing. And it's hot enough for you. <laughs> it's, and it's hot. It's yeah. hot. Hey, and it's that time of the year you and I want to talk fungicide, fungicide strategy. Um, I always start that conversation with the weather. I mean, people talked about the spring, different planting dates, April, May, June. When you look at the season, Ken, what are you seeing starting with that planting date? Yeah, so we have quite a wide planting window again in uh, in 2025. Burn, right? We had a long planting window last year because of weather keeping some growers out of the field. There's pockets like that this year. Eastern Ontario had a few. You know, my territory in uh, the heavier ground in Elgin, uh, southwest Middlesex. You know, so we had this planting window that opened up the last week of April, and then another window in May that preceded some cold weather and some of those developmental challenges that have been issued elsewhere. And then we got into kind of the last little bit where they have enough heat and enough season to plant corn in, in the early part of June. And we have, as a result, a pretty yeah. variable corn crop. But that said, a uh, wide application window forthcoming to manage disease in corn this summer. Let's talk about uh, the big disease, um, tar spot. Obviously, it's been on our radar, been spreading across this province. Let's start there. I mean, in a field like this now, Ken, I mean, we're moving along pretty well. Mm. Um, when is that window? When is a, When do you think tar spot arrives? Tar spot has arrived. Right, so we're, we're, you know, as you mentioned, we're in Oxford County. We have about three years history with tar spot. We're heading into year five in the province of having to actively manage it, depending on where you are. But as you look down at this residue here, we're in uh, corn on corn ground. Yeah. And you know, the point we need to make, whether you're a grower that's dealing with tar spot for the fourth going on fifth year now, or maybe you're in central and eastern Ontario looking to have an eye out to maybe I need to manage this for the first time because I had my first year of history last year. That field, once that inoculum is present on the residue, that's our first point of infection. And really key to note, Vern, that you know that that 15 day, 15 to 20 day late period of infection in the corn plant before it becomes visible. And Albert Tenuta always seems to confirm tar spot the first seven, eight days of July. So we're looking at the calendar. We're here last week of June. We could probably assume that this corn yeah. crop has some degree of infection. We just can't see it yet. I want to talk about timing, but but first, let's have a look at this um, this this corn here. I mean, it's hot, very stressful. Um, you know, we're starting. You know, uh, maybe starting to see a little bit of leaf curl. Important to keep an eye on this one and not sort of like walk away from the yield potential you already have. Yeah, exactly. You know, this this is the the great old Oxford County ground. So you know what? It's it's digging its heels in the way it goes. But for for growers that are in drought prone areas, whether it's heavy clay planted a little bit later, some development issues, or you know the sand and gravel areas that maybe got planted on time but are feeling some of that drought stress if they missed last week's rains. You know, this corn crop right now, we're looking at you know V8, V9 corn is what we're standing in today. Important to understand the development of a corn plant in terms of its actual yield potential and kernel slots. This crop has set its kernel round the number of rows, it's in the process of determining its kernel length. And it'll do that up to about V12. Yeah. So in the next you know, couple of weeks, depending on temperatures, etc. For growers in drought prone ground, I've really noticed in my career a lot that you know it's really tough to watch corn suffer in those two weeks leading up to tassel due to drought. But those kernel slots are set, that yield potential is there. You fertilized it, you you know, you've invested in proper planting conditions and all the rest of it, right? You are into this corn crop and that yield potential is there. And it's important not to lose sight of that when we're looking at drought prone conditions and that fungicide decision. And before long, we will be at, you know, R1. We will be mm -hmm. looking at um, timing this tire spot application. Talk about, uh, you know, that timing and, you know, uh, you know, hitting the sweet spot. Yeah, so the industry with Albert Tenuta's leadership and his, his research as part of the tar spot working group, like we're really, we have a really good conviction around that one application of a product that has control of tar spot on the label at that R1 stage, that green silking stage. It's the best in that tar spot infection curve that's really been the most reliable and consistent to optimize your ROI. And the real bonus there, we can't lose sight of gibberella ear rot and the fusarium ear rots and that dawn condition in corn, extremely emotional issue, right? Uh, 
how fortunate are we that the the prime tar spot management window for that fungicide application lands in the dawn Pretty management window we're really fortunate in that regard and that's really you know depending on on how application capacity is taxed and everything else we're, we're still going to really try to shoot to get as many acres as possible done in that window let's talk about that window um last year tar spot a little later coming in a lot of growers for seeing it for the first time spying at r3 um what's your ta what well, you know what's your message about that window how late can we go yeah. how wide is that window? yeah so you you mentioned it the the theme of tar spot coming in late in some areas did it really come in late for four years in a row we've confirmed tar spot the first week of july visible after that latent period that i mentioned earlier of that 15 to 20 days so the infection is actually mid-june it's not about when it arrives it's about the ramp up so that ramp up it's a polycyclic disease and you know in agriculture we have a lot of polycyclic diseases this one is infecting off a residue it's infecting off airborne sporulation and with wetness especially that extended leaf wetness in the crop canopy we talk about that seven hours for multiple days or nights in a row of leaf wetness it's a tar spot's ability to ramp up is amazing right as a polycyclic disease that's what we have to monitor is the ramp up because if we look at a year like 2024 last year we saw really solid consistent roi even up to that first application not taking place to r3 or that white to yellow blister kind of period in the corn crop where we can get good roi that's a discussion with your certified crop advisor also to, to you know revisit your hybrid tolerance with your seed suppliers that's an important part of the conversation and uh, and really try to get a good foothold on how the disease is actually behaving in the fields because we saw 2021 2023 2024 very quick ramp up 2022 dry july that ramp up was a lot slower and got more severe at the tail end of the corn plant's life let's talk a little bit about a little later in the season you know fungicides we got to talk about uh, late season plant health mm -hmm. and standability i mean after we get through tar spot there's a lot we got we got some work to do and i think one of the key learnings from 2024 burn you know despite the struggles to get that crop in the ground in the spring of 2024 we had some pretty phenomenal yield potential out there uh the more yield potential you have the more prone to a really significant devastating hit that crop is from multiple stressors so that combination of tar spot defoliating the plant and slowing down and killing off that photosynthetic engine let's say you had root stresses due to late season drought right like we didn't have great roots on that crop last year we were lucky it kept raining for most but late season drought stress combined with tar spot really significant hit on plant health and yield nitrogen management last year was a huge factor in how that crop pushed itself over the finish line and how growers were able to capture some or all of that yield potential through uh you know through assessing that that combination of factors so Really important to understand, you add a significant stress to tar spot. Uh, you know, this corn plant, it's setting its yield potential now. There's a lot of kernels yeah. to fill, and when it starts bailing out and cannibalizing to try to make that grain, it's pretty devastating. Not just, uh, you know, as I like to remind growers, it's not just about the yield return. It's not just about the dawn management in terms of what are my PPM levels and how do I market this, but what's your actual cost to reduce yep. plant health when you're the one sitting in the combine? What does this actually mean to you as a grower? Yeah. Well, hey, lots of season left, uh, lots of great crop to protect. Uh, Ken, always great to have you on the Corn School. Thanks for stopping by. Absolutely. It was a pleasure, Bird.